Thank you. <laughs> so, um, just to quickly um, uh, tell you why I'm here today, um, I'm going to give you a quick introduction of what Frog is, but really the, the, the main reason I'm here is to share with you how Frog has been um, facilitating building a community of global schools, uh, both Frog and non-Frog, to really share best practice, um, their digital strategies, um, and really work together. And we're very, very proud to be uh, facilitators of that. So I will be covering that shortly. Just to tell you what Frog is, uh, Frog is a learning platform. We've been here for 20 years. We work in um, 17 countries and we have around 14 million users across the globe. So we work in state schools, independent, international schools, and in fact whole country rollouts. Uh, what makes FROG a bit different is when we work with our schools we almost become part of the team and that means FROG is really flexible um, and we work hand in hand with the team, we get involved with the school development plan and the EdTech strategy and it's very flexible in that. Uh, respect and because of that actually frog then becomes completely bespoke to the school's ethos their vision even down to the design because frog brings everything together in one place it works with all the existing uh, systems in the school and actually becomes a whole school system and at the moment one of the key things have been around um, accessibility so ease of use from all stakeholders, but also still keeping that teaching continuity and not replacing the teacher because nothing could replace that. Uh, there are three key, area, three key areas to FROG. Uh, we have our traditional learning platform, Veely, where all the teaching and learning, the home learning, the assessments, etc., take place and all the whole school activities such as co-curricular, etc. Then we have um, a curriculum um, progress mapping tool, which is, um, it enables you to either take an existing curriculum or completely build your own curriculum. We know how important mapping homeworks to curriculum has been at the moment. Uh, and then what we do is we take that and we look at the class and students and we can see where the immediate gaps in attainment are uh, and then look at plugging those gaps. And then we have a 250,000 curriculum mapped quiz questions engine which allows you to plug those gaps in attainment that said we plug into lots of other systems so teachers can still use the tools uh, that they like to use or find uh, works for them so the important bit real world learning so real world learning is a community of schools brought together by a shared interest and that is engaging with parents, supporting the students, supporting the teachers and sharing, uh, a bit like today's forum, sharing those ideas across each school. And, and, and we run events and we have been running events for about the last 10 months. We have blogs, we have support mechanisms and really this is an opportunity for anybody here to come involved, be, become involved with that. Um, our next event is on the 2nd of March and we have um, the, the topic is actually um, addressing lost classroom time and plugging those gaps in attainment. But just to, to give you an idea of the kind of topics that we've covered so far are things like um, the ability to structure a school day and how important it is for our learners to still follow some kind of routine and Greenshaw High School spoke at one of our early events about that. Um, more recently we've been talking about that continuing personalised learning because whether you're in school or out of school really shouldn't matter. It's about that continuity and personalised learning and is more about um, maybe e-portfolios or sharing what my child is doing in school with their parents. Um, we've had uh, Wally Range High School North Lakes talking about supporting parents as teachers. Um, uh, some of the people that are here today have also joined us at our events and, um, and as such we've covered student and, and staff well-being. Um, most importantly is again when we're talking about a global audience um, it's about exceeding parental expectations and recently Keith Perry from the British School of Paris joined us at COBUS event where he talked about not just having online learning but actually becoming a whole virtual school and he shared many ideas um, and anecdotes of 
the whole staff shift to making sure that their whole digital strategy, strategy was accessible anywhere. And uh, just finally, we have a couple of schools that will be joining us on the 2nd of March, and they'll be talking about addressing that lost classroom time. Um, and we've got Ellesmere College, St George's International Madrid, and we're also talking about tracking progress remotely. So uh, I'm going to leave you on a, a little video which shows you the kind of things that happens at our events. I'd love for schools to join us. As I say, we are just the facilitators of this, um, this, this global movement. So please come along, be part of it. And thank you very much for allowing me to share our story. And I'm going to ask Chris now if he could please share our short video. But we planned our lesson in four phases. And I think that was really important for online learning because young people had to feel a familiar structure to all of their lessons. When we talk about remote learning, a familiar and repeat structure is absolutely key. So one of the things that I've done is I've audited our VLE, our learning platform, to have a look to see where we ended up. Certainly we all started off working in the same direction, but perhaps it didn't quite look the way that we were imagined back at that point where it was all just one of those wonderful, nice to have things. You know, I think as teachers, we work on uh, trying to pack as much as we can, as much information as we can into PowerPoint screens, but what would those actually look like on the devices in the hands of the children? We have uh, become quite clear around reinforcing our assessed curriculum. So um, we have got our KPIs now that have been in place for five years. Um, over the last term, um, it was my my job to stack them through full of exemplar standards and uh, full of um, learning locker resources and extension resources. And so this has been. Um, uh, you know, it, it's a, 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 a kind of system there that is um, fully supportive of remote learning. In-house though, we actually offered, as Kate Rad said, bite-sized training opportunities. So no more than five minutes and very practical. So for example, how to include audio within your PowerPoints that could actually aid the learning. And I genuinely, and I'm happy to say as a national state paid DFE head teacher, um, that the biggest thing I was assessing for our young people was engagement rates, connectedness, and just being in the game. Um, and I think that's the most important thing we assessed. Is all of our children have an e-portfolio. So obviously with very young children, it's really important that the uh, parents are able to kind of see what's going on every day and, and kind of feel like they're taking part in the lessons that are happening and really um, have a firm understanding because some of our little ones, you know, don't go home and say exactly what may have happened during the day. Um, so all of our children kind of have been totally kind of trained in how they kind of get onto the app, they take photos of their learning and that's kind of all uploaded onto an e-portfolio and the parents then have to make comments and they do. So you get this really beautiful interaction that's happening daily, multiple times a day, going backwards and forwards with the parents. Um, and we're also able to kind of update any rewards that are given out, any issues that we might have, reading records and things. So it's just this really beautiful kind of platform for us to be able to feel like we're having those door conversations that you would usually have in a primary school. And I want to celebrate everybody who has grasped the unprecedented issues that we've had with COVID-19 and how you've been able to manage and find the fizz to celebrate it and to put it on a global platform whether you use frog or not the most crucial thing is is that we find out how we can engage our students develop our teachers to be even better than what they already are and to be okay sometimes when things don't go quite right
and appear to play support the dominant features. Before, however, is great teaching and an understanding of learning, structured teaching, clarity of explanation, and scaffolding, and personalized feedback. Center staging all of this is the importance of independent learning skills and support for metacognition and the need for self-reflection by students and indeed by teachers. Mark, well, thank you so much for letting us share uh, what happens at the, these real world learning events across um, across the globe. And, um, and we really hope that schools continue to join us and, and share their stories together.